The Galen Hooks Method is a series of intensives for every stage of a dancer's career. These sessions are an accumulation of everything that I learned over the years, from the time I was seven years old working as a dancer, everything that I just kind of developed as a method of approaching this industry, both as an art form and a, as a business. Dance is both and can be both. And I felt I could share this information with people so that you're not starting from scratch and having no guidance and hopefully my method can help you navigate this industry through the ups and downs and most importantly, develop and maintain and protect your love of dance and everything that you have to say as a dancer and as an artist and as a human being. So the first one is called Artist Development and that's for anybody that's looking for more. They have more that they want to say as an artist. Maybe you don't have the confidence or maybe you've hit a wall and you can't seem to get past that wall. Maybe you're stuck in your head. There are dancers who work all the time but just don't feel creatively fulfilled on the jobs that they're doing. There are dancers who are 18 years old and have just moved to LA or New York and are still trying to figure out who they are. Or maybe you're an actor and you are trying to express yourself through movement. Maybe you used to be a professional dancer and now you don't want to take class but you still want to dance and remember what it feels like to love dance. There's a heels and a non-heels session and they're both open to men and women. Whether you're a beginner or a veteran, you have something to bring to the table and the artist development session is about pulling out your individual unique voice that makes you valuable. The next session is called Behind the Audition. The Behind the Audition Intensive is all of the tips and tricks that I wish I had known but that I had to figure out through trial and error. I've been on hundreds of auditions since I was seven. I just think it's criminal for a dancer to not book a job because of their haircut or because of something they wore that day or any other thing that distracts us from your talent. The good thing is you can do something about your haircut or what you're wearing or your headshots. You don't know to do something about it until you know that it needs to be fixed. This intensive is for anybody asking, why am I not booking? Some people are cynical and think, well, it's because I don't know the choreographer. Well, if you truly think that, then why are you auditioning in the first place? Why are you even here? There are people who book jobs who don't know the choreographer, and there is some other reason that you're not booking the job. If you watched yourself audition, would you hire yourself? I'm brutally honest with you, critiquing your look, how you're picking up the choreography, your freestyle, your slate, your headshots. How do we make you different than every other blonde, than every other Asian, than every other person in the room who can decently pick up the choreography because 90% of that room will get the combo. But why are those handfuls of people getting booked every time? We figure out your strengths and your weaknesses, we minimize your weaknesses, and we strengthen your strengths, and that will help you you not only just perform better because we've worked out the logistics of how to properly audition, but just the peace of mind of knowing that you have studied what you're doing and that you can walk into a room and go, okay, there are 800 people there, but I'm good because I've done my homework, I'm focused, I know what I have to offer, I know why I would hire myself, and so nothing else matters in the room. You don't care what other people are wearing, you don't care how everyone else freestyles, you don't care because you're so focused and that peace of mind really makes a difference in the way that you dance. Figuring out how to package the authentic version of you into a bookable package that people want to have on their team, that an artist wants to have off of their shoulder, that a choreographer wants to have in the room every time because you're reliable, because you deliver. Those are all of the things that we work on in this intensive. The third intensive is called On Set, and that's for anybody thinking, what do I do once I book a job? This was at the request of past participants saying, we need guidance on what to do once we book a job so that we get rebooked. Maybe you're already booking, but you are winging it when you get there, or you haven't booked yet and you don't want to wing it once you do book the job. How do you fill out paperwork? How do you join the union? When do you talk to your agent if you have a problem on set? When do you talk to the producer? When do you talk to the choreographer? When do you talk to the first AD? What do you do if a release is slammed in your face and they tell you you can't go on set until you sign this release form and it's 2 a.m. and your agency's closed? What do you do if you feel unsafe on set? And then artistically, how do you make your mark on a job? How do you make it so that you're not in the back corner of the formation but that you're right off the artist's shoulder? How do you 
make it so that you're the one that's asked to do a lead part with the artist. Once you get that lead part with the artist, how do you not crumble under the pressure when the entire crew is standing behind that camera and you're by yourself on set with a major artist and your heels are four sizes too small and you haven't had any time to rehearse and you just go, go, action. I like that I can share that information with new dancers so that the industry as a whole becomes better. We are the only profession that stares at ourselves in the mirror for eight hours a day, literally comparing ourselves artistically and physically to each other all day, every day. Choreographers don't do that. <laughs> Models don't do that. We are the only people that do that. There is something very unique about that aspect of our profession that I'm seeing is doing a lot of damage to people. When I see them in these intensives and the things they say and the way that they move and their lack of confidence, I want to undo that damage because it's awful to see otherwise brilliant, valuable, smart, creative adults being stuck in their heads telling themselves that, that they're not good. You are, you have so much to say. You are smart, you are talented and you're beautiful and all of these things and you don't think it. And I want to help you not just think it, but know it and believe it. That's the way that you survive being cut audition after audition after audition and not wanting to quit and move back home because you know what you have to bring to the table when you walk into a room of 800 other people auditioning, you're focused. There's a reason that you're there. And then when you're cut, you know that it's not because you suck, it's because you're just not right for that job. Sometimes we just don't have control over whether we're right for a job or not, but we do have control over whether we leave that audition crying, upset and depressed and hating ourselves. And I don't want anybody to have to go through that because it robs you of your love of dance and you cannot let this industry take your love of dance from you. You need to cherish that like it is the most sacred thing in the entire world because it is. There are people who would kill to have the ability to dance, to feel what you feel when you dance. And no choreographer, no artist, no agent, no job, no industry should take that from you or can take that from you unless you let it. And I don't want you to let that happen because I haven't and I love dance more every single day. Every day. It's more exciting. It makes me feel more me. It makes me feel alive. And that is a possibility for every single aspiring dancer out there to feel that. And I wanna help you. I want to give that to you. 